Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You know, in another book uh, that, that, uh, that I've been reading about the crucified life, it's an old one, A.W. Tozer, mm -hmm. says, split this room in half, right? Talks about on the left side, left side, left side. we put the pleasures of the earth. And on the right side, we put the delight of the Lord. All right. On the left side, we put the treasures of the earth. On the right side, we put the treasures of heaven. On the left, we put reputation among men and our desire to stand well with men. On the right side, we put our desire to stand high with God. By contrast, we see how different we are as Christians. The Christianity that we profess. It, there is a very clear line, brothers. And whether you see it or not, it exists. Are you on the right or are you on the left? Come on. There is a difference. Are you delighting in God or are you delighting in the in men? Right? In the praise of men. What are you what are you after? But how does that translate? How does that translate into uh, our fellowship? And what does it mean to transform ourselves in order to be a better fellowship for God? A better brotherhood for God. And, uh, and, and, you know, when, I think Vince mentioned it uh, yesterday, right? The two greatest commandments, love God and love others. They are not, they are not exclusive of one another. They happen together. Love God and love others. Right? The church is where that all comes to fruition. This brotherhood is where this all plays out. The battlefield that we fight in order to love God and love others, is fought together with each other. The problem is, is, you know, you see exactly what happens when the guys get baptized. You know, the 3,000 get baptized, they become the first church. Mm -hmm. And this is what it looks like, right? Yeah. Acts 2.42. Devoted to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking bread, to prayer, to sharing with one another, right? Taking the, their property and selling it so that everybody was equal. Sounds like socialism, but it's the best kind, right? Every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. Yeah. There was a spirit of continual repentance within the church. It wasn't like, hey, today I'm going to repent and then I'm good. I got baptized. I'm done. <laughs> they continue to transform. They continue to change. Amen. Right? Amen. But how far away are we from this model? Yeah. <laughs> when we've got a guy that's leading our Tulsa church... And he's talking about, hey, uh, brothers, you know what? Why don't you just respond back mm. to a text or a call? How about responding? Mm. Brothers, that's not even, that's not even uh, polite. Yeah, that's right. Not that's not even respect. No. I'm not even talking about love. Right. But why don't you even just respond to a brother that is, is trying to reach out to you? Yeah. Why, yeah. why do we have to chase each other right. in order for you... To be spiritually fed. You know, brothers, it talks about working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Your salvation. Like, I'm working out my salvation. I'm getting to, you know, if I'm in sin, I'm getting out of it. I'm trying to figure a way to confess, to talk through those things. I'm getting together with guys. We're, we're getting disciples. I welcome people's input into my life. Because I know... That I am blind to my own sin. I am blind to what keeps me away from God. That responsibility is not the church. Right. That responsibility, it really, if you want to say, hey, be your brother's keeper. That, that sounds great. The end of the day, it's your responsibility. That's right. You're the one that's going to stand before God. Yeah. And you're going to explain to God, hey, you put people in my life that were talking to me about this thing, this sin or that sin, or trying to encourage me to do more for you, or to, but I chose 
to ignore them. Oh, I chose to stiff arm them and put them to the side like I'm a Heisman Trophy. You know, you are the one that is choosing the right or the left. Yeah. And brothers, if we if we want to be sober about where, where we're at, just answer the questions, right? Just answer, what am I, where is my time, where, where is my money, where is, where, where is my actions and my attitude? Where does that show that I am on, it's not a scale. I'm not saying, hey, where's your, where's your attitude at from one to ten? All right. right? That's not how God presents this. Like, All right. I'm not presenting like, hey, you're hey, six and a half. That's great. Right? Oh, you're a, a low C. So you're kind of passing. Right? He says, life or death. Yeah. Come on. It, it, am I missing something there? No, no. It's pretty clear. You've got to choose. That's, that's, the, that's what God puts before us. That's what Jesus' life does. It asks you to choose. All right, and then I'm gonna. Oh, wait, how much time? Oh, okay. Here we go. Come on. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, here it is. This is the lay down time. So you thought you thought that that was the the. Let's go, Ed. Oh, come on. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the right one. Come on. Okay, so brothers, right? Romans three twenty three. We love that. We all agree. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Hey, I sin. You sin with the, the the guy that hasn't committed their lives to Jesus. He sins. We all sin, right? So hey, but the difference is if we are followers of Jesus, if we are disciples, right? Then it's reasonable to assume that we are repenting of our sin. Is that a reasonable? Yes. yes. Yep. Reasonable. Yes. Yeah. Reasonable, yeah. right? I hear a yes. Yeah. Absolutely, right? I don't see anybody saying no. I don't believe well, that we need to repent, right? Yeah. So you all agree? Yes. Uh, okay, so then, <laughs> no? Luke 3 8. Show your repentance. Uh, show, show your uh, produce fruit in That's keeping right. with your repentance. Yeah. Right? Hey, if you're repenting, you're truly repenting. You're truly transforming your life, right? I'm not, again, I'm not talking about changing in, in behavior and actions. I'm saying, is your heart dedicated and truly devoted and committed to God and in demolishing every obstacle that Satan presents right. and this world presents to take you away, right? Then ask yourself, what fruit am I producing? All right, Let's okay. be honest. Many of us, and I'm not just talking about, hey, I'm studying the Bible with so-and-so, or I baptize with so-and-so, but what fruit of the Spirit, even, is yeah. coming out of you? Right. Right? What gentleness, what love, what patience, what, where is that in your life? Hmm. So when you ask yourself, again, you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. We're just providing some, uh, some, some thoughts, right, from the Bible to help us. But where is your fruit? Brothers, because I, I am pretty sure that I talk to not just the, the men that are struggling with whatever purity and, uh, and anger and working too hard and greed and every other thing under the sun, but I, I talk to uh, the wives who confirm that they have unspiritual husbands. <laughs> right? That their husbands or, or even the, 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 the single sisters that are sitting there depressed and discouraged because single brothers don't want to go and encourage their sisters. They don't want to, oh, well, it costs too much money for that. I can't, uh, you know, I can barely uh, afford taking care of myself. That's a problem, guys. That's not an excuse. That's a you thing. Take care of it for God. Amen. Right? So where is the restoration? Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you the more spiritual one, who live by the Spirit, should restore that person gently. When's the last time you actually restored a brother or a sister, but basically with brothers, right? When's the last time there was some restoration that you were working on for somebody else in your life? Right? That's a question. Like, ask yourself. That is supposed to be part of who you are if you agree with all of this. You're, you sin and we are disciples, then we should be repenting of our sin. Well, if that's not happening, yeah. 
then I'm going to say there is no repentance in your life. Okay? There might be something. There might be some sorrow. I'm not saying we aren't sorry. I'm just saying repentance in the way that God expects repentance. All right. Transformation. The way Jesus was asking for transformation. Yeah. All right? So where's the daily encouragement? Hebrews 3.13. But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. The you know, when we are repenting, we are encouraging one another. We are doing it daily. And we're doing it because sin is active. And what happens is when we leave that sin unrepented from, that you know your brother is growing bitter roots and he is being deceived by sin. Mm, right. no. Daily encouragement uh -huh. for your brothers. And I personally know that it does not happen. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure I don't get daily encouragement by all the brothers. Mm -hmm. Right? I may get one from a couple of guys maybe once or twice a week. I don't even do it. I mean, I try, but I don't get to it every day. But that should convict you. Yeah. Like, repent. Yeah. Yeah. Change. Transform. Be an encourager. Amen. Come on. Right? Yeah. Here's the one. If you, uh, James 5.16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Where is confession? Where is the healing? Where is the prayer of righteous men? I just want, I want you to think about that. We all agree we all sin. Yeah. We all agree that in Hebrews it talks about encouraging one another daily mm -hmm. so that sin's deceitfulness does not come, come into our lives. So that's a daily thing, guys. Come on, it's a daily thing. I mean, we need to be talking to each other and communicating with each other, lifting each other up daily. But when is the last time you really confessed your sin? Great question. Confession for healing mm -hmm. because sin destroys us. Yeah. 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 So, yep. It destroys us. Come on, brother. So lastly, there is godly sorrow. Come on. There's a difference. Yeah. Right? I, 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 didn't, I said that some of us have those feelings of being sorry. Yeah. Right? I'm sorry for what I did. I'm, I'm sorry that I hurt God. You know, Paul was sorry that he wrote a letter to challenge the Corinthian church. He was sorry that he did that. And what happened? It hurt them. Amen. Right? It's going to hurt you when somebody's trying to help you and call out things in your life. It's going to be painful. It's not going to be sweet. Yeah. Because sin is ugly, and it is painful. And in 2 Corinthians 7, right, 8 through 13, it says, it, it Paul's telling them, hey, even if I cause you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Yeah. Right? You can't regret trying to help somebody come to Christ to restore the relationship. You can't feel sorry about that. Let's go ahead. Yeah. He says, I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led to repentance. For yeah. you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. And see what this godly sorrow has produced. Remember, fruit. What has your fruit produced? What has it produced in you? Earnestness, eagerness to clear yourself, indignation, alarm, longing, concern, readiness to see justice done. At every point, you have proved yourself to be innocent in this matter. So even though I wrote to you, it was neither on account of the one who did the wrong, nor on the account of the injured party, but rather that before God, you could see yourselves how devoted to us you are. By all this, we are encouraged. Amen. Amen. Repentance is encouragement. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. When we change, when we transform, we're going we're gonna to be there for God. And a uh, couple uh, last thing here. Uh, yeah, well, come on. All right, time for refreshments. Okay, that's easy. Acts 3.19. Brothers, there are too many sad, sad people amongst us. Yeah. Right? When we are repenting, yeah. this is an ex excellent sign. If we are repenting, we are refreshed. Amen. Right? We are energized. We are ready to go. Yeah. Does that describe you? Because I honestly, there are a lot of sad men momos walking around. Oh. Here. Oh. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry that it hurts you. But I don't regret it. Come on. Anyway, if anybody wants to know about uh, the Wales Revival, come and see me later. <laughs> <laughs>